Hello brothers and sisters. This is going to be my last video for now and I will try and make some more later. Um, I don't have to be at work until tomorrow at 12 noon. So any of the, those of you that want a little bit of counseling, I will not spend a lot of time with you, but I can spend up to 15 or 30 minutes with you. But please understand at this time, I must clean and sift through my house. But if you urgently need to speak to me, and it needs to be urgently, it needs to be important, then I don't mind you calling. I am here for you. I am here for you to cry upon my shoulder, lean upon my shoulder, and I am here to love you and minister to you. But um, I must share with you the visions of October the 6th and the um, vision of October the 9th of 2019. All these, this one was done in 2018. Yep. Or excuse me. I'm sorry, it was done in October the 6th of 2019. I don't know why I said 2018. Okay, and then this one, I didn't write the date on it, uh, but I know that it was given to me around Thanksgiving. It was given to me around Thanksgiving. So I'm, I'm gonna give you the interpretation um, for these visions. And you need to understand the shelter of the Most High God will not open until these things happen. This is the reason why he sent me on a white tablet, Cindy, I am ready. And it was a text in a huge, big vision that was bright, luminous light. Okay? So darkness must come. Okay? And then uh, it, he gave me a, a vision of two huge bears on a road in the daytime hours. So darkness must come. So I believe what he's representing is that there will be... A, uh, after one night, these, be these events will begin to happen. Don't know when, when the day is that's going to be this night, but you just need to be prepared. You need to be out of these cities. Um, if the Lord's willing and can help you to get out of them, you need to get out of them, and you need to get out of them quick. You need to be praying um, like the power of lightning. You need to be striking heaven with a bolt of prayer day and by the step and by the breath, you need to be striking heaven with a bolt of lightning from your mouth, prayers from your mouth to get out of these four cities and get to a shelter of the Most High God, get to a camp of the Most High God, get to a safe area of the Most High God. So anyway, the two bears represent Russia. They will attack. Um, the first city that I was shown on the red alert map is New York City. It was in red ink. And that means the Lord Jesus speaking from what we've learned through the Bible, through the different disciples that wrote down what Jesus said, and they put it in red ink. So New York City will be hit. Los Angeles and Las Vegas was the second red map alert. Salt Lake City was the third red map alert. You need to be ready. You need to be really praying with bolts of lightning, bolts of prayer from earth to heaven. You need to be on your knees, brothers and sisters. You need to be asking the Father, move the airplanes around. Move the airplane flights around. Help me to get out of here, O oh Lord. I want to serve you in the camp of the Most High God. I want to serve you. Then the next thing that he showed me, is that the power, the power would be broken, the electricity would be broken. Then he said, Cindy, I am ready. That is the shelter of the Most High God opening up. He will give us a physical building, and those that are uh, purified uh, by the Father, and he will allow the demonic realm to pur purify you like gold and silver like you have never imagined. If you listen to the video before this, there is such power and glory at what the um, demonic realm is going to allow to do to you, and it's to help you to become purified like gold and silver to be the true sons and daughters of God. Who can withstand it? Who can take it? You better get ready to take it. Now then, let me explain these visions. Okay, so these are things that are going to take place that these things would come forth. Now then, from what I'm understanding, there's going to be a huge city on fire, and I'm going to be able to see it like an inferno, like a volcano is in the middle of the city, like a super volcano. It's going to be that big of a fire. And it's literally going to kill, from what Holy Spirit when Jeff Barley has been shown, it's literally going to kill 10 times the amount of numbers that 9-11 was able to kill. 
So uh, I believe that the city that is inferno that's on fire is New York City. People were gathered like a dinner. Well, let me tell you, people in New York City live in a party atmosphere 24 seven. I believe that the Lord is saying that there is a city that's like Babylon and they party, they leave God out of them, their lives and they live for self and they party day and night. They're always celebrating. They're always inviting family and friends over, but they do not live for the Lord. This is this great state of New York. They are Babylon. You can believe it or not. Uh, the world economy will crash. There will literally be $3 in my hand on that day. So the Lord's showing me the money will be cut. It will be cut. Then he showed me business after business, unending visions, can't even give you the number of the count that he showed me, of any and all business signs throughout the world um, in different languages, different signs. And those signs, the lights are going out. Those signs are closing down. So the Lord is sh was showing me in that, that the economy has crashed so badly that life will not be ever the same again. Then he showed me from the great city that's on fire, in the midst of all these other things happening, in the midst of that great city on fire, people would be driving out of that city in their cars with no one to stop them because they're eager to leave. So it tells me the cars will still be working uh, for a period of time as these events take place. The power in this, in this particular vision hasn't been shut down. The cars will be able to move. But when the power gets shut down before he is ready for us to have the shelters of the Most High God, all these events will purify the sons and daughters of God, but all these events will cause the wicked to be more wickedly. Now then, the Lord God is showing us great power here. He's showing us that we're going to be tossed around as Christians like we're in a dryer. He's going to He's shown us that we're going to be tossed around like we're in a dryer. And the demonic realm is going to be able to test you like you have never been tested before. And these orders will be allowed by Satan. God's hand is off the earth. You can believe that or not. His word said that he would allow Satan to rule and reign for three and a half years. Well, that half year is already here, baby. He just hasn't gone into the Antichrist yet. And by the way, the Antichrist is King O. And when he goes into the Antichrist, look out, guys, because he's going to be ready for those FEMA camps. He's going to be ready to chop off the heads of the sons and daughters of God. He's going to be ready to issue out his mark. And he's seeking who he may devour, whom he may destroy, who he may rob your very life, your very soul from you. He's seeking who he may mark and seal his brand of 666 on your head or on your hand or with a microchip, or even if his number is in a vaccine for COVID-19, not sure, okay? Not sure, but I wanna let you know, last thing, there will be UFOs that come forth as these things begin to happen. You have all thought, oh my gosh, she's crazy. She's talking about UFOs. No, the Heavenly Father has showed me UFOs are very real and you will not even be able to hear them as they are above your house. They are the most demonic, and you need to not go to them. They are demonic. They are wicked. I have asked the Father about these alien-like creature, creatures that I have seen. Uh, some of them have the skin of like a lizard, and it was a rainbow-like color, and she was able to shapeshift into my granddaughter um, before she shapeshift into her original image. She was trying desperately to seek to um, take away my godly discernment and get me to believe her lie. She used my granddaughter's being, my granddaughter's spirit, my granddaughter's fleshly features to try and um, believe a lie. She was actually trying to tell me about this ministry that uh, I wouldn't be here anymore, that God wasn't gonna send these people to me. Isn't that wicked that she knows the information, the plans that the God, the Lord God has for me, the most, guy, God, most high God has for me. Isn't it, isn't it something that she knows the plans? And that was her point of the dream, was that she was coming to try and take away the dream the Lord gave me. And I won't let no man take that away. That's not boasting, that's faith. 
That's faith. I have such faith in my Father that no matter what happens right now in tribulation in the camp, in my family, uh, through others, I have such great faith that this camp will be that I, I literally have seen the living fountain of God. I know it's going to be, baby. I know that fountain's going to pour out the love of God. The people are going to come. They're going to get saved. This is why the Lord God told Daniel that she's going to do many things for me. One of the days that we were praying, uh, we, no, excuse me, we were visiting on the phone. She actually showed me that I was going to buy it from the Lord that I was going to do many things for him. And I'm honored. And I want you guys to give your heart and soul to the Lord. I want you to give your life to the Lord. I want you to commit your heart and soul into his hands every day. I want you to study his word. I want you to love him. I want you to repent and examine yourself and get cleaned up, guys, because there's a fierce time coming, and you need to be ready. You need to be ready. Anyway, please listen to the four videos before this one and make your decision. Are you going to repent? Are you going to examine yourself? Are you going to be changed? Are you going to help the Lord in the Lord's camp? Are you ready to come to the Lord's camp? Are you ready to sell all your possessions and give it to the ministry of the Most High God? Are you ready to help build the Lord's shelters? Are you ready to help build the Lord's camp and supply tents and cots and food? Or are you going to leave us just hanging? It's up to you. I'm asking each and every one of you to donate what you can. Sell what you do not need. While the getting is good, you need to sell your items. Use uh, Craigslist. Use, um, my daughter does Facebook. I do not do Facebook. But I have seen her take Travis's things from this camp and he put one by one the information. He sent my daughter pictures of his stuff. And I believe it was in three days, three days to a week, somewhere in there. I'm pretty close on my thinking. Travis was actually able to sell his dining room, oak dining room table, very nice dining room table. He was able to get rid of his bed, his TV, and I uh, think, uh, oh yeah, his uh, Roku device. He was able to get rid of that. So he got rid of all of his last finest possessions. And um, he has bought things for this ministry. We needed a wheelbarrow, he bought it. He bought, brought food and water uh, that he had been storing up for this camp. He has given his time and ded dedicated himself. Uh, and I'm not trying to boast about him. There are others in this camp like Catherine. She has given food. She has given of her possessions. She has given of her time, her work, her hardship. She has given us things from out of her storage to help store the Lord God's food right here on my property. She gave me a little shed building for the ministry that's like, um, I want to say it's an 8 by 8 a little 8 by 8 uh, size shed. And we've just about got it filled up. We've got... Uh, like a three foot, uh, four, three to four foot by four foot area in there that we need to fill up all the way to the ceiling and then it will be full. But guys, that's not going to supply this living fountain of the Lord thy God, the people that's coming, that I asked him, Lord, how many are going to come? And he showed me a living fountain of the Lord thy God that it would literally spew out of the earth and they would come. They would come and get fed, come and get watered, come and get the gospel. The Lord God has prepared me for himself, guys. I was born for himself. <laughs> and he loves us all so much, but we better get to examining ourselves or you won't make it. You won't make it against the schemes of the devil, but you will make it if you stay in the word, if you stay in great faith, and if you are... If you are knitted together with others, that you can keep that strong unity of power and prayer and joy and patience of the Lord, you can survive. You can. And I want to help you. How many of you want to come to this camp? It's in Texas. You need to start praying. You need to start sending your prayers up like bolts of lightning. And you better get on it. You better fire up your prayer life. Fire it up. Shoot those bolts of prayer to the heavenlies. Get on your knees, brothers and sisters. You need to understand what's coming. You need to understand that the fire of heaven 
is going to be upon the sons and daughters of God that are purified like gold. Now then, you need to understand, if you are a true believer in Christ, the Lord God has showed me there is a living fire that is of the Holy Spirit. It is in a circumference over your head, down your shoulders, all the way down to your feet. You know the Emmy Awards? That little statue uh, of that person uh, that they give out to all the uh, Emmy Awards people. Remember, it was the, like the very first one. It was like a bronze, gold-like statue of a person being very bold and standing like a soldier. Okay, well, if you remember those old-day Emmy Awards that they used to give out, I don't think they give them out anymore. They give out different kinds of stuff now. But um, I have been shown by the Lord God in a dream and uh, he had me wake up in the dream, but I was still in the dream, but I woke up in the dream and he had me look back at my pillow and he wanted me to see something. Serpents tried to get on me while I was sleeping and they literally melted into my pillowcase. He wanted me to see that there is the living fire of God that is over me, in me, and on me. And no demonic spirit can touch me without melting down. Yahoo! Woo! Get the power of that, baby. Get that power. You need to understand that not one demon can touch you. So as they come to start haunting you, trying to bring you down, trying to get you to go back to your old sins, you need to understand that if you are truly saved by the Lord Jesus Christ and you are the son or daughter of God and you have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you and you put the old person to death and you got baptized in the name of Jesus, you got this living fire upon you, baby, and you can't see it, you can't feel it, but let me tell you this. They can't touch this, baby. They can't touch this. They can't touch you, not unless you let them come in. Not unless you let yourself get low and go down to that masturbation again. Go down to that pornography again. Go down to drinking that bottle again. Go down to doing that drug again. Going down to letting yourself get all loose and letting somebody climb up in you that don't even belong to you. If you let yourself get down that low, I assure you, those demons are going to do everything in their power to rip you apart, including sending every whoremonger to get down your pants that you might so fall that you can't get up. You've become more and more wicked. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you better sound off your prayers like bolts of lightning. And now, I'm ending this video, and I am not kidding. I am here to serve my Lord. I'm here to minister to you, but I cannot talk to you guys all day and all night, all week, and then some next week. I'm here to minister to you as quickly as I can, but let my videos do that. I've got an almighty work to do in my house, and I want it to be done by July the 7th. I'm setting myself a date. I need your prayers. I need my management team to encourage me, love me, and pray for me. I have chosen these four. The Lord has placed these four in my life, and he's drawn them to me. He's brought them physically here to help me clean up the yard. They're doing a mighty work. Are they perfect? No. But they're trying to be, and the Lord God is purifying them now. They just don't see it yet. He's so purifying them. He's so purifying them. I hate what's happened in our camp. But what's happened in our camp must remain a secret until I'm ready to reveal its entirety. And it's not time yet. But you need to pray. You need to pray for Kevin, Travis, Catherine, Vivian, and myself. You need to pray for us. We are five teardrops and blood drops of Christ. And we shall carry out the gospel with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength in the Lord's camp, the shelter of the Most High God. And we will obtain permission through a royal decree to camp on this land that has the red fence on it. And I assure you that the Lord God will work on my landlord's heart, his wife's heart, and they will begin to love us with the love of Christ. And he has showed me he's making the hearts of stone and concrete into the hearts of flesh. Read Ezekiel 36, verses 25, 26, and 27. Powerful. The Lord God can do that. He can transform you. And he's doing that right now today in all of our lives. But how many of you are sending forth prayers like bolts of lightning to the throne of God? My granddaughter once made a drawing and she um, 
or excuse me, it was me. I'm sorry. It was me drawing. I was trying to help my granddaughter understand how powerful our prayers were while we were on our knees praying. I drew this picture, little stick people, on their knees praying, and it represented me and her, and I made her a little shorter and a little smaller beside me, bowing down. And then I showed her a picture on that picture of the devil with his pitchfork and his little horns up there on top of his head. And he was crying, whining like a baby because we were able to get our prayers through the Heavenly Father. Then I showed her something else. I said, sweetheart, there's something so powerful in heaven that there are 24 elders praying at the throne of God day and night. And they're praying for the saints of God to make it. They're praying for the plans of God to make it. And God bless America. Those of us that want to be the purified sons and daughters, we're not going to be branded. We're not going to be singed. We're not going to be left here for the leftovers of what's going to happen after the comet passes. We're not going to be left here. We're going to be raptured up, baby. We're going to some of us are going to go and we're going to be spared from the Antichrist's mark and some of us are going to be tried and some of us are going to be beheaded. Some of us are going to be spared by pole shifts. Some of us are going to drown in our sleep. Some of us are going to have a, a, a tsunami slap us in the face. But guess what? You will be spared from the, the trying and testing of the mark of the beast because you are weak and the Lord does want to save you because he loves you. So be ready to accept what's coming our way. I love you.